Hello everybody from YouTube, it is I, Tofu Ace, and I realize I do not have my headphones plugged in. <laughs> this is this is just a great start to a video, isn't it? Hope you guys are enjoying. If you notice, I have version 0 0.2, 3.0, it's not the updated ARM release, which is, uh, what, 23.5, 0 0.23.5, so yeah, the reason why I haven't uh, upgraded to that yet is because I still have mods and be kind of weird if I did my first few videos on the YouTubes with my mods and then like oh I gotta start over again because uh, mods aren't updated guys hooray <laughs> let's do this all over again from scratch now yeah not gonna be doing that at least not for a while so let's see what we have here oh that's right last episode we had some... We, we got major goodies, didn't we? Look at all them goodies. Look at all them goodies. Got aeroplane parts, um, reaction systems, you know, like the uh, RCS systems. Tiny little fuel tank. RCS tanks, RCS tanks, fuel lines. Holla! <laughs> I don't know why I would holler for kill lines but <laughs> there we go a new globe uh, SRB solid rocket booster I am gonna have tons of fun here I think probably next after our next rocket mission I'm gonna make me a plane uh, yes radial battery bank and photo photovoltaic panels I can't pronounce things Okay, so here we go. This is our previous rocket, the Science Express. Uh, we should do some updates to it. We have those solar panels now, um, fuel lines. We have all sorts of goodies. We might even change out the fuel tanks to have less parts, which might be a little bit easier on the computer and uh, stronger structure overall. And get rid of those uh, loud solid rocket boosters, right? As a matter of fact, we were changing out so much of the original rocket, why don't we just start off with a new one? So we'll call it the Dark Star. <laughs> In a world where such and such has to build a rocket for space places, we have the Dark Star. It's not just a black hole anymore. It's not the rocket that we need, but it's the rocket that we have now. I don't, I just like talking in deep voices to the point where I need to cough and drink lots of water <laughs> okay oh yeah before um, I know I said radial I think battery I really meant um, you know to be able to stack that battery in line so yeah <laughs> English how to learn zit <laughs> okay so we're uh, starting off with the capsule and always uh, have the parachute system in consideration because the yeah, you you'll probably eventually will need it, and if you don't ever need it, well, you're probably gonna die anyway out there in space. So, yeah, let's not do that. All right, so we have three parachutes so far, and we're gonna use these new fangled uh, solar panels here, photovoltaic panels. Now, at first I thought, well, I just have two. But the problem with this is, if I'm in space and I forget what, how my ship is angled towards the sun, uh, Kerbal, in the game they call it Kerbal, then I'll have problems and I won't always charge. And when you're time warping and traveling and, and trying to fly at the same time, it's, it's a lot of stuff to go on uh, to keep track of, right? At least in my brain, so <laughs> I decided just to have them all around the place, right? All around the capsule. The problem with that is that it might block either the hatch or the, the ladder on the bottom, so we're going to test that out really quick. Everything seems to be working, so we'll get Jebediah back into the capsule and recover that. So let's have Fast Forward do all the work for us, unless you really want me to upload like an 80 minute video of me <laughs> putting together a couple of rockets for you. and going through the iterations and testing. Yeah, I don't think so. So, fast forward will be our friend in this instance. 
I think it'll be interesting to see like a KSP 80s training montage video <laughs> of like, uh, um, you know, Jebediah or one of the other Kerbal Knots <laughs> trading and having the rocket for them built specially crafted for this new mission, having some cheesy 80s music in the background. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen since uh, YouTube doesn't like covers of songs, so yeah, you're not going to be hearing these silky pipes playing for you. <laughs> anyway, I should say what I'm doing on the screen, right? <laughs> so the first iteration, I thought oh, I'll have a long lander with all the fuel. Like, no, it's going to be a little bit hard to, to uh, land. It'll be a little unstable. So we're doing this side-by-side uh, engine and um, fuel tank layout with the ladder going down the front I had to turn around 180 degrees the science pod and then put the goo canisters on top of that uh, um, beside that I mean of course we have our antenna in the back and the thermometers right above the solar panels on the side I thought I could put a fairing but it's gonna look a little ridiculous so I decided against that. See, yeah, it's like a giant... <laughs> no, it's not gonna work. So... That is our stage. We have the... Small... It's basically the same design as we had before. Just that now I have the rocket engine in the, in the middle. And then the tanks on the side, which I can drop. And get rid of that, that weight. So we're using these longer fuel tanks from the uh, KW rocketry pack. It's basically just twice as big as the ones I was using previously, so we're going to cut down the parts count quite a bit. And now I'd like to introduce you to the Maverick 1D from KW rocketry. 350 max thrust, ISP of 320 in atmosphere. This is going to be a great first stage for our rocket to propel us past all that tedious atmosphere that gets in our way as we try to go to the stars. <laughs> so this is going to be great not only for the f uh, first stage, but also for the boosters that I'm going to attach to the side of the rocket. And using our fuel lines that we just got recently, it's going to be even better since we can do what's called asparagus staging. It sounds a little weird, right? <laughs> but yeah, basically the outer tanks will feed into the inner tank and as we go along, we can drop off the empty tanks to get rid of that weight and increase our thrust to weight ratio. So here I have two times symmetry enabled as I place these tanks. The reason why I'm using two times and not higher number is because of the fuel line setup. You're going to want to have two tanks equal to the same stage of the rocket. In other words, each one of these boosters, as I hit the space bar and stage the rocket, I'm going to be shitting off two uh, as, as they go on, instead of like using one whole layer like I did with the previous rocket design, where I did not have the uh, fuel lines, right? So I just had the, the middle engine off while the outer engines were enabled and I was using that thrust and then once the fuel was out, I dropped the whole thing. Well, so with Asperica staging, you have fuel lines and you're emptying one of, actually two of the boosters into the next in line. So I'm going to be going from, if you count clockwise, I'll be going from the right to the left, emptying all the fuel from the right into the left tank. And then when those are empty, the first stage, when those are empty, I'm going to drop them off. Then the next stage comes in and I'm going to be emptying the fuel from that stage to the next one in line to my left. Of course, you can set it up counterclockwise if you want. I mean, it's up to you. I, I This is the way I learned. This is the way I've always done it. It's going to be a little bit easier to see once we get the fuel line situation going on. But yeah, you can see I have six total. I'm going to pick which one I want to start off with and then set up the fuel lines where it pumps the fuel into the next line of tanks and engine. So I'm going to be firing everything at once, all the engines at once, even the one in the middle. That way I can use all that 
engine thrust from the get-go. So everybody is doing their fair share of the work, right? And the great part is once uh, we have tanks that are, not, that are empty, we can just drop them off. Instead of before, we had to just take everything up at once. And then when we were out of fuel in those tanks, we finally dropped everything. So this is much more efficient. There really isn't anything in real life, no companies that are u using this, and I can see why. It's gonna it's gonna involve a lot of fuel pumps and transferring of fuel between tanks, and there's always gonna be a risk of failure, right? So to reiterate, we have each one of our boosters in a group of two, and we're gonna have three groups of two. I'm gonna be shutting off each group in a stage from right to left, or clock rise, when you're looking it up from top, right? Like as we are right now. So we wanna make sure our staging is correct first before we add the fuel lines, since we might have the staging wrong and the fuel lines wrong, and, and they might be inverted or just in the wrong order generally, right? So what I have is in the first stage, all the engines are firing, including the center. The next stage after that is going to be my first group of two uh, boosters that are going to, when I hit the spacebar on stage, they're going to drop off from the rocket and drop down to the earth to curve it. The next stage happens, I'm going to hit the spacebar again and then that next group is going to come off. I'm going to ha only have two boosters left. So I'm going to be going from six to four to two. So as you can see here, we're going to select my fuel line. I'm going to choose my first group that I want to start the whole process with. And I'm in two times symmetry, so we have a group of two rocket boosters in one stage. I'm trying to get it lined up perfectly, so I'm going to go from right to left, as you see. You can even see the little arrows on the line, the fuel line. So there we go. I was making sure. It really doesn't have to be completely perfect, but I want to try to keep it somewhat stable, so somewhat even along the boosters, the, the fuel tanks, the actual fuel tanks where they're connecting. So again, from right to left, clockwise, when we're looking up, and there you go. Now, this last stage, we're going to have it pumping fuel Instead of from right to left, we're going to have it pumping from out to in. So it's going to be pumping fuel into the center stack. So when we have released all the boosters, the, the, the middle of the rock will have a complete amount of fuel. That way it can completely burn that one stage. And once it's out of fuel, then we'll drop that and we'll be on to our next stage, which will be which will have an engine that'll be more efficient in outside of atmosphere and space, right? Here we go, home stretch. We are putting the finishing touches on our rocket. I'm just measuring the length of the new KW rocketry small fuel tank compared to the previous one that is stock. And this one's a little bit shorter, and I think it carries a little extra fuel to boot, so I'm using that just as a a reserve, just in case. I'm not exactly sure how much Delta V this stage has, but I'm planning to take this to the moon and back the moon. So I'm using fuel lines, again just like our asparagus staging in the last booster, it's going to be pumping fuel from the outside to the inner tank. To the inner tank which has the engine so we can shut off that extra dead weight once the fuel tanks are out of fuel. You know, you can think of it as like a drop tank on a, on a plane. So there we go, we have lots of new parts that we have utilized to make a new rocket entirely. And it should have less parts than the previous one even. Making sure staging's right, it's in the right order. I'm combining the decoupling and the ignition, the engine ignition, in the same stage. So that's what you see me 
doing to the right of the screen. That's my staging information there. I'm also going to go and set up a abort sequence, meaning that I'll be turning off all the engines in the bottom and the rest of the engines in the other stages and only have the top stage, our lander technically, decoupled from the rest of the rocket with its engine ignited. Oh yeah, and don't forget about lowering the landing gear, just in case. I could have probably dropped the drop tanks on the sides, but I don't know how much explosions would happen normally when I would need to engage the abort sequence, so <laughs> I didn't want to add too much fuel to the fire, so to speak. Actually, technically, that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot of setup that goes behind a new rocket and staging and group actions, all, all this crazy stuff. But the fun part is in testing. This is the reason why I got into KSP to begin with, was the, the testing crazy contraptions that we make and seeing how they perform in the game world. So let's get to testing. Remember we have six boosters in total in groups of two. So we have three groups. There's our first group. We're down from six down to four boosters in total. We're gonna go from four to two boosters left. Each time we, re we release a group, it's going to improve our thrust to weight ratio. Our last group is going to be released here, and I completed this uh, mission. Just uh, I just went into the atmosphere, did an orbit, landed. Oh, and uh, got some science along the way. That's why we have 52 science earned on this mission. 132 science total. I have my eye on these new fangled solar panels that will track the sun all at once, so I don't have to have panels surrounding my craft or placed strategically. So yeah, we'll go for that next. <laughs> 